Next up, we have Julia. Let me just um, open this thing with my face real quick. Here we go. Hi, Julia. Hello. Is it true that you never, ever read instructions? That's, oh my god, am I supposed to stay here now? Or? No, it's fine. Okay. It's, we're, we're, <laughs> we, roll, we roll with it. Uh, you have visited, 20, visited 27 countries in your life. Isn't that true? Uh, and you used to be an extreme lover. That's Wait, what? That can't be right. Oh, an extreme lover. Extreme. What did I like? <laughs> As in bungee jumping, hot air balloons, <laughs> zip lines, and you even flew a small airplane once. <laughs> Amazing. Julia, welcome to the stage. <laughs> okay, I press this one. Just that one. Okay. Hi, everyone. Whew, it's, it's happening. I'm super happy to be here. It's an um, unforgettable experience. And thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, so I call myself Artpreneur. So we're going to talk about art, about the art of expressing yourself, about reconnecting with your inner child, and a little part of my journey. The journey never ends. And obviously, I'm going to share a little piece out of this. But I feel like over a certain period of time, I was able to generate a lot of insights. And I know that we all are going through the same thing. We all have struggles, we all have worries and fears. So I know that when you're stuck, when you're in that moment, it's essential to see somebody who's been through the same thing. So hopefully for someone, even if it's a one person, I think it's a win for me already, I'm gonna be that person tonight. And I'm gonna share my story, my experience, my learnings, and hopefully it's gonna be inspiring and valuable for you, okay? So let's start the beginning. That's how it started. I was born, and that was already a success. Um, <laughs> I was born in Zaporizhia in Ukraine, which is a small town. Um, I included a couple of childhood photos, and then you can see the persona is out there, right? Like I was uh, showing something. I was kind of creative. I was artsy. I, I liked the, like this vibe. Um, something happened to this photo, but uh, initially had a better kind of quality. Uh, when I was a teenager, when I was a child, I was a super creative little human being. I would spend hours, hours in my room painting, sketching, exploring new mediums, self-educating myself. Um, so I found this picture of uh, portraits that I was doing when I was like, I don't know, 12, 13 years old. And they were insane. Now that I look at them, I can't believe that I made it when I was 12, years old. So I was super creative. Then I became a teenager and music entered my life or maybe I entered music. Um, so somehow I got into the local studio, I found my teacher, I started learning how to sing. It completely um, helped me to reinvent myself, my whole personality. It opened me up, it helped me to bloom. So here I'm, th I think I'm 14 years old and I'm performing. That was um, one of the local or national competitions, right? So that was my life. And then I finished school, I was 17 years old, and then that's an important time because you have to choose, okay, what's next? So obviously, obviously, logically, the next step for me was economics. <laughs> so I went to study international economics and that's how I spent first four years. Um, got my bachelor. Um, um, little sneak peek, I don't regret it. Uh, it was a beautiful time. Um, I enjoyed it, I traveled, I explored the world, I explored different opportunities, but obviously art was on the shelf. Art was not a part of my life anymore. So yeah, from art to being an adult. Uh, then um, six years ago, I came to Canada just on my own with same two bags. Um, <laughs> Well, they were different, but same quantity. Um, anyway, so I arrived to Canada because I wanted to continue my journey and I wanted to get to continue my um, education. And I got my second degree here in marketing as well. Uh, by the way, it was an absolutely gorgeous experience and I think it helped me a lot in the way I do business now. So yeah, it was, I got my second degree here and then I just smoothly entered the marketing industry of Canada. Um, I spent a couple years working right here uh, in the downtown Toronto in a couple marketing agencies as a young coordinator, then manager, and everything was smooth and brilliant. And from the outside, I had a completely perfect picture. But at one point, I actually found myself in a super dark, super dark spot. Um, so the question is, are you sure that this is the right way? So after maybe seven, eight years um, of me 
putting art, all forms of art, painting, singing, completely on the shelf, finding myself working as an employee in the corporate world without understanding what I'm doing there, I find myself stuck. And I'm sure that you guys can relate. There are lots of us who can, who can relate to this. I've been there and I know how it feels. So I uh, discovered my own symptoms of being in the wrong place. So crying on the way on to from after work, who can relate? Yes, I can see you brothers and sisters. Uh, being always late, I actually found out that that's another way of me trying to escape uh, my work of doing something I don't like. Emotional eating, I gained 20 kilograms. I lost it now, but um, not the best thing to do. Um, I felt stuck and frustrated up to the point that I closed my eyes and I just complete darkness. I had no idea uh, what I'm doing here. No, again, I'm... Um, I'm a young woman, I'm on my own, I'm an immigrant, I just arrived, I'm doing something I don't love, feeling completely stuck, and the worst thing is that I had zero clue how to make it different. I had zero clue that there is another way of living your life, because, well, growing up, you know, you don't usually see people making big decisions, changing their lives, following their passions. We typically so see a couple models, and that's what we think is normal. So. I saw that and I had zero clue how to make a change. Um, yeah, so it was an absolute emotional roller coaster from tears to joy, from tears, mostly tears. Uh, so, okay, I realized I have to do something about it. So, generally, when people ask me, hey, Julia, like, so how did you make a decision? How did you um, make all those transformations in your life? My, my answer always is that I was, I was desperate enough. So being desperate enough is the answer. If you feel like you still can't make a move, probably you're not there yet. When you come to that point, when you're already at the bottom, there is no other way. You have to make a move. So I was at that point. And I realized, okay, well, I have to do something. And again, I completely forgot that I can sing. I completely forgot that I can paint. Completely. It was like an after eight, nine year break. So I was always pretty uh, passionate about entrepreneurs because I see them, they're following their passions, they're fulfilling their dreams. So okay, then I started a YouTube channel. It was called Entrepreneurship and Pierogies. Um, I think it's a genius name. Um, so I would invite, I would go to all the networking events in Toronto. I would meet all the entrepreneurs. I would bring them to my house, put them on my sofa, give them a plate of pierogies and interview them. Uh, and it was actually a beautiful experience. I think I shot like maybe four episodes and it was gorgeous because every single time I, I spoke to them, I met them, it was like um, another university degree. Like it gave me like a massive, massive progress. And after a couple of months, I, I looked back and I was like, you know what? I don't feel it's working for me. Uh, yeah, it's fun, but I don't feel it's working for me. And I have to give a credit to myself that I was, first of all, brave enough to give it a try from complete scratch. And second of all, I was brave enough to tell to myself, you know what, I don't think it's working. Uh, okay, move on. I already felt like, okay, well, I tried something, didn't work out, but that means that something else is out there. Um, and then, something came to my mind. Oh, actually, I can sing. Oh, actually, it was a huge part of my life. So that's the time when I decided slowly to make my little steps into the music industry of Toronto. So there are lots of open mics in the city. So you can go, perform, and that's what I did. I would go, I would sing a couple songs, and I would feel an overwhelming feedback from the crowd in a good way. People would come over, they were like, Julia, it was amazing, and I felt so inspired, and I felt so connected, and I felt first time in many, many years that I'm doing the right thing. So step by step, I um, got my, like, I found the right people, I found the guitarist, I found the band, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna make a show. So within a month, I made a decision, I'm gonna organize the big show, and it happened. It happened the day that changed everything. I'm sorry guys, I don't know what happened to the photos because initially they were cut down, but now you have to uh, uh, see this uh, weird kind of crap, but it's okay. Uh, it's okay. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful photo of me sitting on the stage. Um, so I decided to organize the show and I made it happen. Um, I kind of invited all the guests, I planned the whole event, I sold the tickets, I discussed it with the venue, I uh, m made this whole thing up and then it happened. And it was one of the most beautiful experiences of my life because, again, I felt like I'm doing something I love. I'm on the right place. That day, on the stage, I remember it very well. I made a decision, okay, I'm quitting the job. It was Friday, and I think on Monday, I came back to the office and I quit. 
um, done. Uh, so I gave my two weeks notice, right? So I had a plan. I obviously figured everything out in my head. So my plan was quit my corporate job, done. Uh, switch the music full time by playing shows, collaborate with event planners, private corporate events. Good. Uh, work part time at a local as a local guide for tourists. There was an app, and it would connect you to the people. So I figured this whole thing up. I signed myself in. So uh, this should have worked, okay? And obviously, do part time digital marketing because, well, I have experience. Um, that's what I've been doing for a while. So I wanted to use this this asset as well. So this was my plan. The first part done. Uh, and then something went wrong. Um, something went wrong. Um, so I gave my two weeks notice, and then in two weeks later, Friday, my last day, I'm saying bye to the whole office. I'm very proud of myself. Yeah, there is a lot of pressure from the outside, a lot of pressure from family, from community, from people. Like, hey, are you sure? Like, you have a secure life. You have insurance. Uh, you're working in a beautiful. Be like, again, there is a lot of social pressure that I'm sure you guys can kind of imagine or relate to. I was so proud of myself, I was unstoppable. Monday, two days later, the world split in before and after. Something happened uh, that changed our whole lives, the lockdown. Oh. Happened two days after my last day at, at my job. So that's what I've seen for the next couple years. Sorry, we're closed, right? So the lockdown happened. So what can you do? It's something that I couldn't um, influence, something that was out of my hands, right? It's an external factor, but still kind of fucked up. Um, a lot of pressure. I was, it was already a lot of pressure. So obviously, this factor brought much more pressure to my life. I think what helped is that at the beginning, we all thought, oh, it's going to last for two weeks, for a month, so it's fine. I didn't feel that desperate. But with the time, as the time was passing by, yeah, that's when I started to feel the real pain. But anyway, I was very energetic. I was ambitious. It was just like first couple weeks, first couple months, I was like, yes, uh, full-time artist during the lockdown, I'm going to do it. And something happened to my pictures again. Um, so... I was kind of figuring this out. I was super active online. I was meeting with lots of musicians, making lives, Instagram lives. I started the Radio Toronto Initiative. I was, I was all over. I was doing lots of stuff on Instagram. There was an article about me, how Julia went from nine to five to a full-time artist. Uh, beautiful. From the outside, it was a massive success. Um, massive. Uh, I participated in the Canadian talent show. It was called The Shot. Again, it's kind of squeezed, but it was called The Shot. I passed a couple of rounds. So um, it looked like I'm doing it. It looked like I'm getting there. But uh, did I mention this as well? This is actually what I was experiencing. An absolute emotional roller coaster. Yes, from the outside, it was fun. But actually, I felt super scared. I felt very frustrated. I feel stuck up to the point when I was crying the whole day. Am I talented enough? Uh, I cannot get any money. There are no events. The plan with playing shows crashed. The plan with being a local guide crashed. All of that crashed. Thanks God, I secured myself with that part-time freelance, right? Thanks God. But still, my whole plan was crashed. So it was an absolute emotional roller coaster. And mostly it was anxiety, um, sadness, a worry, fear. On top of that, lots of pressure coming from the outside, so it became really tough to handle, and I feel like my, um, my body felt it as well. So something happened, something again, another life-changing moment. Um, so maybe six, seven months after this roller coaster up and down, my body probably not kind of, uh, yeah, gave me a flag. Hey, Julia, something is going on. So my ears got plugged, like I was in a plane all the day, for a month. I went to the doctor, nothing was wrong. So now I think that that's what the way kind of my, my body was kind of flagging, hey girl, something is wrong, you're, you're struggling, it's not the way it's supposed to be, it's not really healthy for your emotional, like for your emotional health, mental health. So my ears got plucked. So imagine I can't sing anymore. So I got freaked out again. Hey, the only thing that I love doing, now I can't be doing this. So that was the first time when I realized that uh, we are much bigger than what we do. We are not what we're doing. That's when I started to kind of detach myself from what I do, because you are bigger than that. You can do many things. There are many ways to express yourself. But at this moment, I felt fear, frustration, and anxiety, because I was so scared to go back to that life that I really hated without having something I love. So 
Anyway, I couldn't sing, but my creative potential was already unlocked. Something was already getting out of me, and I needed to find the way how. So one day I was just walking by the Dollarama, and I'm like, okay, I see, you know, they sell those canvas for $2. I grabbed one little canva, I brought it home, and um, it's been nine years since I haven't painted at all, and I completely forgot. I was sure that I can't sketch, I was sure that I can't paint, so I started from scratch. So I got that canvas, I brought it home, I Googled uh, painting, and I tried to duplicate it, I tried to imitate it. Since that day, I never stopped. It was three years ago, that little canvas and that little painting became the beginning of something very big and, and very new. And I became a beginner again. In the story, I became beginner many, many times, and that's the, uh, I'm proud of myself. I was brave that I wasn't scared of starting from scratch again. So uh, that's it. That's how my new journey started somehow. Um, so I explored all, I re-educated myself. I relearned everything. I relearned the different mediums. I got into creating multiple art pieces. I got into exhibits, into art shows. Eventually, I started teaching, uh, giving workshops, and my community was growing, growing, growing. I went from one workshop per week to three events, four events that were sold out. So somehow, over two years, this whole art journey led me to a big point. Pictures are, again, uh, something happened to them, but one year ago, Art in Around Studio and School opened doors to everyone who wants to express themselves and reconnect with their inner child. So one year ago, I opened my school. Uh, it's a pretty big space in the midtown Toronto. Uh, school and studio where I teach, where I share, where I help people to reconnect with themselves, with their inner child, to learn, to start again, to express themselves. Uh, so, how does it start? It started with me being super frustrated, me crying on the way to the subway, and it led me to this point, to the Julia that is doing the biggest art shows, the Julia that is having her studio, her students, uh, expressing herself, but it's, uh, it's the journey, and the beauty of it is the life is dynamic, you never know what's going to be the next step. So what I'm doing now, now I am balancing out multiple things. So, the logical question, so Julia, what happened to the music? So for the last two years, while I was really working on the studio, um, music, I put it a little bit more on the shelf because I really focused on building the business, the community, the workshop, the classes, and when the moment was right, recently, I integrated music back into my life. So now, other than this, I have a band, it's called Las Mariposas, which means butterflies. We perform, uh, we are doing shows in Toronto. I changed my strategy, and music now is not something I completely rely on to make money. I found other ways of monetization, and I'm a big fan of spreading your eggs in different baskets, right? So in, in my case, um, figuring out what other channels you can use to put less pressure on that one thing. So being you is beautiful. And we have to express it. I believe that my mission as a human here is to express myself. And I think that everyone's mission is to express ourselves. And it doesn't have to be art. It can be talking to a stranger, saying hi, saying bye, buying a coffee, uh, uh, feeding a pet. It can be absolutely anything because every single thing we do, we express ourselves. And I think that that's the big mission. So in general, uh, these are a couple of lessons that I learned, hopefully will be useful. So making uncomfortable decisions is the key to living your life. Yes, uncomfortable decisions are absolutely required if you want to live truly, truly your life. It's tough. Yeah, it wasn't easy to leave the job. It wasn't easy to go through this whole experience. It's not easy to leave relationships. Like, those decisions are tough but they are necessary. It's okay to be a beginner again and again and again and, and as many times as, it, it's requir as life requires, right? It's not that scary to be a beginner once you make that first step. We all are so fixated on, oh, I'm 25, I'm 30, I'm 45, I'm 50, 70. It's, too, it's never too late. Everybody has their own pace. Everybody has their different timeline. It's never too late to be a beginner and it's a beautiful experience. Obviously, it requires some sort of patience. Um, you have to be hardworking, you have to be passionate. But being a beginner is beautiful. So I want you not being scared of it. Life is dynamic. It's okay if things change. Life is dynamic. We are dynamic, just like a notion, just like a river. I'm going, like with my business, I'm also now at the stage of another transformation. So the new era is coming. Something new is going to be happening. So that's okay. Don't feel too attached. Like, enjoy the moment as much as you can. But don't get too attached to one thing. Don't get too attached to spaces. Life is dynamic, so as you are. People might not like or approve what you do. Fuck it. That's the most important one. Your family, your friends, your mom, your dad, your daughter, your son, people might not like it. 
and that's okay. I understand that it's a journey, it takes years. Maybe work with a therapist, with a mentor, um, to really not give a fuck about it, but it's absolutely essential, because up until then, how many percentage of you is in your life? Is it your mom, is it your dad, is it your cousins? At the moment when you really stop caring about what they all say about you, you start living your life. Follow your inner voice, but be strategic. Um, all those big deals, big uh, sentences like quit your job, move to another country, they sound beautiful, I love them, they are very romantic. But at the same time, don't forget that you have to be strategic. We live in a materialistic world, we have to pay the rent. So make a plan B, right? Try to minimize the stress on your shoulders and create a safe landing for you as much as possible. So that's the story. Thank you guys for listening. Um, Thank you so much, Julia. <laughs> Fuck it. I, I have to ask, um, do you still have the dollar store canvas? I still have it, actually. I, it's, it's very important for me. I actually keep it, yeah. Nice. Uh, we have time for a few questions. Anyone? 